There he is. Got one. Got one. Got one. Welcome to another episode of Bass with Captain Lou. Guys, I'm on the land. I'm doing a uh, bank fishing edition. I grew up bank fishing here in South Florida and I've been wanting to do this type of video for a very long time. And I said, what the heck, I got some downtime. Let me go ahead and shoot the video today. So here I am, stick with me. I'm gonna show you guys how I break down our canal systems, give you guys some tips and tricks, and uh, let's see what I get myself into today. Stay tuned. I like to cover a lot of water when I bank fish. Walking a couple of miles is not unheard of. Because not each, not each stretch of canal is productive. Uh, the fish may be held up or a hold up on particular types of cover or chasing any particular bait. I carry very light. Uh, my bait of choice today or my lure of choice today is a hair jig. I've been doing very well with them in my local canals. I got a couple of colors and some varying weights. And that's it. That's all I'm using today. Uh, just my rod. And that's all I'm carrying. So, but that's just my choice. Um, I find that the most helpful. I've been fishing these canal systems for over 35 years, so to be lugging around bags and fishing bags and various rods. And, I mean, you can do that, don't get me wrong. A lot of people do and good for them. I just choose not, I choose not to do that. Um, oh guys, look, another hazard that you gotta be very careful with, like I told you guys, is broken glass, you see? And look what I'm wearing. So you could get easily cut or if you fall and place your hands out when you're falling and get your hand sliced. So you need to be very careful when fishing our urban canals. Fun places to fish, but it can be very hazardous to your uh, to your health. Many of our canals can be very clear due to the vegetation that, it, that they have, but this particular stretch is very, very muddy. So based upon what I'm seeing, I may not be staying here very long. I don't see any bait fish in the area. Usually you'll see plenty of bait fish swimming around, brim, a bunch of juvenile exotics. Um, all I see are big tilapia and that's basically it. Um, it just doesn't look fishy to me. So the cool part is I could just get in my car and drive to another stretch, which I think I'm gonna be doing. Okay, I'm not liking this, so I'm moving to another system. It's too muddy. Not liking it. Stay tuned, I'll be back in another system. All right, I decided to fish a much quieter stretch. So let's see if it changes. A lot less traffic, that's for sure. And I like this bank system a little better because I'm closer to the water. So when it comes to landing a fish, there's less distance between me and the water, which helps landing, trust me. Maybe I might land something nice and you guys could see what I'm talking about. But the higher the bank, the greater the chance you have of something happening, either the hook pulling off or line breaking or a rod breaking due to the, due to the distance between you, the fish, between you and the fish basically, so. So I could give you guys an idea of how these canals are shaped. There's very little bank to them, really. So what happens is they go on a little shelf. They go like they go like this, then they come down like a bowl, and then they come up again, and then there's a little bank. And that stretch will last for. These canal systems start in one end and end at, and end in the ocean. So. That's why, like I mentioned, you can catch snook and other kinds of inshore variety of fish because these systems eventually hook up to the ocean from one end to the other. So, <clears throat> like I said, these systems are unique. What I like doing is I like fishing uh, as parallel to the bank as possible. Obviously, 
I can't go parallel, but I like to get as close to it because a lot of fish, a lot of the species that I target, see there's something right there. I don't know if it's a tilapia or a grass carp, but there's something right there on the water's edge. And I can't tell you how many times just fishing this way along the, along the water's edge has gotten me or yielded me some nice bass, um, nice peacock, just because they hang around the ledges sometimes going after bait fish. When fishing a bank that you're not familiar with, especially here in South Florida, you gotta keep your eyes to the floor. Uh, you gotta look for snakes. You gotta watch out for gators. Um, and again, those hazards that I talked to you about earlier in regards to glass and uh, loose ground, loose soil, and all that good stuff. You just have to be aware of these things when fishing down here. Um, I do or have come across alligator, um, especially after heavy rains. They just follow the high water and sometimes they just, uh, sometimes they uh, take up residence in a canal system and, and they don't leave. So. You gotta be very careful and keep your eyes open as far as that goes. There's a lot of movement in the on the bank right now, along the bank, but my suspicion is that these are just tilapia. Tilapia can see you from a mile away and then they'll, they'll make a big, uh, they'll do a big wake as they flee. And then they circle back and hang out about six feet away from their, from their spot. So that's a telltale of a tilapia. See? Tilapia. Tilapia or Mayan cichlid. Usually a Mayan cichlid will stay very shallow also. But again, you just never know, but... Most of the time, these fish are just uh, some sort of an exotic along the bank, and you spook them, and they dart out. So far, not a sniff. But you just never know when you're going to walk up on one. I like making very long casts to avoid these fish from detecting me. Uh, canal fish are just very wary. I mean, they can see things from a very long distance. So when approaching a location, if you come across a spot that you like, I would cast to it from a distance and not walk up on the location and cast because more likely than not, the fish has already seen you. They're alert to your presence and they're gone. Many say, watch how you walk because they could, the fish can detect the vibrations of your approaching and all that good stuff. Um, I, I don't know about that, but what I can tell you is that a fish's eyesight is pretty good. So they could see you from a long distance away since we're taller. And what's also what's taller is our rods, especially if we carry them vertically. So they will see these things and if something looks remotely out of the ordinary, they're going to leave very quickly. So I like to keep my, my presence as small as possible there's a peacock and I missed it. Okay. There he is. Got one. Got one. Got one. That's a peacock. That's a peacock. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's a largemouth bass. Look at that. Look at that. It's a nice largemouth. Look at this. Look at this. Beauty. It's a nice fish. Look. Look at that. The hair jig barely stuck him. But that's a nice fish. I'll take it. <laughs> that bass hit as soon as the jig touched the water. That bass hit. That jig. All I felt was the... All I felt was the tick and the weight. <laughs> Threw me off. I thought it was a peacock bass the way it hit. 
There you go. It goes to tell you. It goes to show you just never know what's going to hit. So I think I'm just going to keep my mouth shut and identify the fish once I bring it in. If you guys haven't become members of UltimateBass.com yet, I highly recommend you do. Uh, just this morning, as a matter of fact, I, go, I went ahead and posted uh, just a small little article or a small little informational post about hair jigs and peacock bass and the reasons why I, I, I use them. And uh, like I said, the reason why I use them, I'm using one now. Uh, this one here is another custom made hair jig, as you guys could see. Uh, this one uh, imitates a, a juvenile uh, Mayan cichlid. And like I mentioned in the article, uh, you know what? Um, tell you what, you guys have to go uh, become members and read the article for yourself. And uh, read over the two main reasons why I fish a hair jig. How about that? But anyways, I really enjoy using these. I have been using these for the last few months. And I found it has made a difference in regards to my fishing. There's one. There's one. There he is. Oh! Oh! He wanted it. There he is. Ho oh, ho! Let's see. This one. This one. This one looks like he's catchable. This one's catchable. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, uh, looks like you may have skipped town. This location here that I'm at is known for its peacock bass, largemouth bass, snook. Oh, another thing you got to watch out for are burrs. I got one in my heel right now. Oh, that hurts. Those hurt. Those hurt. Oh, I hate those things. These things. I freaking hate them. Man, do they hurt. What I, about, what I like about this particular area is the hydrilla does a good job with um, cleaning up the water. So the visibility here is a lot better. Um, right now the sun is setting, so I won't be able to easily see the fish. But uh, I know they're in here. I frequent this area often, so it hasn't let me down yet. Here it comes. There he is. 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 You guys saw that one. That's a peacock. He came out of came out of his spot, that's for sure. There he is. He freaking swallowed it. He swallowed that damn thing. Oh boy. I need to do some surgery. All right, not a big one, but that's pretty cool, right? Usually peacocks hang out in pairs sometimes, so if you catch one, there's a probability or a possibility that you may catch another one. But again, this one struck right against the vegetation line, as you guys can see there. Right along the vegetation line as best I could. And he was just hanging on the outside edge of it, which is typical of peacock. They either they either hang out on the outside edge, or depending on their mood, they'll hide along the bases. And if you come across the pocket of where they're hiding, they'll just sometimes surprise you and just smash your bait. But they're not too active today. I'm when they're active, you, you'll catch you'll catch your a good number of them. Not a crazy amount, but a good number of them. Yep. There's a something feeding right there. There's something feeding right there. Whoa! Whatever he is, he's slamming it. There's a mullet. Let's see if you guys can catch it again. Look at the size of that mullet. Let's see if he jumps again. Oh, only two jumps for you guys today. There's one. There's one. That is a... 
A little peacock. Another peacock. Yeah, see, so pretty. Peacocks sometimes have a very brief feeding window at night or in the evening right before the sun comes down. And these low light conditions help because they can't really pinpoint what it is that you're throwing at them. And they just attack with a, with a vengeance on your stuff. So if you're moving it quickly in front of them, they don't have that chance to really identify what it is. Oh, there's another one. Told you. See? A little flurry on my way back to the car. It always happens this way. Not always, but it happens. Again, a little guy, but still. I mean, look. See? So as you guys can see, the hits are very quick and very sudden. So, got to be ready for them. And you'll notice that I don't set hard with these, especially with a hair jig. I just do a sweep hook set because these, these hooks are so freaking sticky that I don't need to do a monster hook set. The fish sets, the fish is, the fish's temperament sets, his, sets the hook on himself. So make that, make, make a note to yourself, you guys, that you're targeting peacocks treble baits or single hook pressure you don't no, look at that mullet you don't need to set the hook hard on these guys because they basically set uh, they set the hook on themselves i wanted to go ahead and thank you guys for watching this video hopefully you learned something but i just wanted to bring you guys along and share with you what i do when i go bank fishing um as you can see there's a you, there's a there's the opportunity to catch s s different species of fish at any given cast. Today, fortunately, I was able to showcase a, uh, a largemouth on one canal system and a peacock on another. Um, sometimes it's just largemouth or sometimes it's just peacock or sometimes it's largemouth, peacock, and snook. You just never know when fishing a South Florida canal system. But uh, nonetheless, it's never a dull moment. And uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Take care of yourselves.